The Leviathan Melvilli was named after the biblical sea monster, Leviathan. If you haven't read the Bible, the Leviathan was a sea monster, resembling a serpent, that was a metaphor for a powerful enemy. Later on in history, the Leviathan became a term used for a great whale, as we saw in Herman Melville's classic book, Moby Dick. And that's exactly what Leviathan was, a species of sperm whale that's been extinct for about 9 million years. Hence the two names, Leviathan Melvilli. And it was nothing short of badass. But if it hadn't gone extinct, would the world we know today be much different than it is? Or would history have changed completely? Today, Life's Biggest Questions asks, what if the Leviathan didn't go extinct? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that imagines the impossible. I'm your host, Charlotte Dobray, and this is where I ask you to smash the thumbs up, subscribe, and ask us a question in the comments below. The Leviathan was discovered rather recently. It was first documented back in 2008 when a skull was found at Cerro, Colorado, a desert in Arizona that was once a huge body of water. Leviathan lived during the Tortonian stage of the Miocene epoch, which took place between 9.9 and 8.9 million years ago. Unlike most modern whales, the Leviathan was an apex predator that ate other whales and large marine mammals. For comparison, the sperm whales that currently exist munch on giant squid. Leviathan also had huge teeth, some over a foot long, that would allow it to bite off large portions of flesh. It's likely that the Leviathan didn't even eat entire bodies of the prey that it consumed. Similar to sperm whales, the Leviathan was around 44 to 57 feet in length and weighed up to 50 tons. It is one of the largest carnivorous predators that has ever walked, or rather swam, on planet Earth. Experts believe that the Leviathan was a fighter. It would ram its huge head into other whales. It is also believed that the Leviathan may have come into contact with our old friend, the Megalodon shark. A giant whale actually competed with a giant shark for food. Can you imagine how epic a fight between a giant predatory whale and a massive shark would be? Maybe that's a topic for another Life's Biggest Questions, but back on this topic. The Leviathan's hunting style was similar to orcas, where it would isolate prey, pursue it, and then drown it. Unlike killer whales though, the Leviathan probably hunted alone. At the end of the Miocene era, the world began to cool, which caused much of the food Leviathan preyed on to die. But what if, somehow, Leviathan managed to survive this global cooling and lived on? Firstly, if Leviathans didn't go extinct, we would likely see far fewer modern whales, dolphins, and seals in the oceans. As I previously stated, the Leviathan ate large marine mammals, and it ate a lot of them. Once the megalodon sharks went extinct, it would have virtually no other apex predators to compete with. The megalodon shark and the leviathan lived in the same part of the globe, near Peru, and evidence of both have been found at Cerro, Colorado. Without megalodon, leviathan would reign king of the ocean. Because the leviathan needed a lot of food, it would spend the winters near the equator and follow migration routes to the north and south pole in the summer. We would see thousands of carcasses belonging to mid-sized marine mammals washed up on beaches with chunks missing from the leviathan's bite. In terms of human history, there would would be a lot more stories, legends, and folk tales about Leviathan. Yes, we have Moby Dick, but the sea monster in Herman Melville's book was fictional. There would be far more mentions of a giant predatory sperm whale in Inca history. Perhaps the Incas would have even thought of Leviathan as a god. Tourists that visited Peru along with alpaca merch would be greeted by stuffed leviathans, posters, and memorabilia. Inuit peoples who hunted whales for thousands of years and still do today would have come into direct contact with leviathan. Whales are an important part of Inuit culture and entire communities would live off of whale caches. Perhaps Inuit peoples would have not even settled where they did in northern Canada and Greenland. When they made the choice to live there, there was no other predators and food was easy to come by, including whales. This would not be so if Leviathan had not gone extinct. Inuits would have to compete with Leviathan for food. And lastly, let's not forget the Vikings, who would have also had to deal with Leviathan. Norseman kitchen waste from Greenland has been found to be rich in whale DNA. It can be assumed that Vikings would have come into contact with Leviathan, but we don't know much about how they would have interacted, as humans and Leviathan have never lived alongside each other. Maybe Leviathan would have stayed away from Viking boats. Maybe it would have rammed them with its head, taking chunks out of them, thinking they were whales. We just don't know. We can only guess. If the latter is an option, Leviathan would have made sea travel extremely difficult. Otherwise, not much would have been different when it comes to human history if the Leviathan did not go extinct. 70 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, there lived a giant marine lizard known as the Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus roamed the oceans around Western Europe and North America. Because this was the Cretaceous period, the last era of the dinosaurs, it was one of the last Mosasaurids to exist. But what it lacked in timing, it made up for in size. Mosasaurus could reach lengths of 17 meters or 56 feet and weigh 28 tons. Mosasaurus went extinct at the same time as the rest of the dinosaurs, at the end of the Cretaceous period. 
did. But what if it didn't? What if Mosasaurus still existed? That's what we're going to talk about right now on Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that imagines the impossible. I'm your host, Charlotte Dobre. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments below a question you have always wanted to know the answer to. You know that part in Jurassic World where there was a feeding show and a gigantic crocodile looking dinosaur ate a great white shark? Yeah, that was a Mosasaurus. Let's say, somehow, whatever killed the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period did not manage to get rid of Mosasaurus, and it was able to live on until modern day. The Mosasaurus looked like it was a cross between a whale and a crocodile. Mosasaurus is believed to have lived in salt water, but other type of Mosasaurus have been known to live in freshwater rivers as well. It swam near the surface of the water, because despite the fact that it had rather large eyes, it had poor binocular vision. It also lived near the surface of the water because it breathed air, making it a lizard, not a fish. Even though it had poor vision, it also had a huge double hinged jaw and massive teeth. Mosasaurus was a carnivore. Its favorite snacks included fish, birds, plesiosaurs, other mosasaurs, and turtles. Its strong tail and barrel shaped body suggest that it swam around similar to sharks. Mosasaurus was likely at the top of the food chain in the ecosystem. It was so big and its jaw opened so wide, it could eat pretty much anything it wanted. Mosasaurus pierced its prey and then swallowed it whole. Toward the end of the Cretaceous period, plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs began to go extinct making Mosasaurus the prominent predator of the seas. For this reason, if Mosasaurus had not gone extinct, our oceans would be far less populated. It would likely feed on huge sharks, small whales and dolphins. Perhaps many of the larger marine animals we currently know of today would not have had the chance to exist at all. Mosasaurus would have just eaten all of them, especially sharks. Mosasaurus loved sharks. The interesting thing is, passengers of a carnival cruise back in 2014 claimed to have seen a huge creature of some sort swimming near the ship, which was in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico at the time. It became known as the Carnival Cruise Monster, and a passenger named Paul George described what he saw as being a huge monster, 50 feet in length. The creature came up for air, but there was no spouting. It exhaled below the surface of the water like a crocodile. To this day, it's unclear what Paul George saw, but it definitely was out of the ordinary. Perhaps Mosasaurus didn't even go entirely extinct, and they could be roaming around our vast oceans and we would have no idea. Based on this account, one could assume that Mosasaurus could live alongside humans at sea, as long as the boats were big enough. But it would mean bad news for fishermen in smaller boats, as well as people who love to sail recreationally. Mosasaurus' jaw was so wide, it could pretty much just swallow a whole boat in one go. That wouldn't however mean that humans would have to avoid the sea completely. They would just need bigger boats. Mosasaurus might have been the top predator at the end of the Cretaceous period, but but another top predator has emerged since then, humans. Because Mosasaurus needed to come to the surface to breathe air once in a while, that's when it's the most vulnerable, and when it could become a target for fishermen. If Mosasaurus were still alive today, it's likely that a scene similar to the one in Jurassic World would become a reality. We would probably want to keep some Mosasaurus specimens in captivity, both for study and for entertainment. Millions of spectators would bear witness to the Mosasaur, the ancient crocodile that managed to live through the greatest extinction event in the history of our planet. What if Megalodons didn't go extinct? First First of all, let's go over some quick facts about Megalodon so we're all on the same page. The name Megalodon comes from the Greek meaning big tooth, and with teeth over 6 inches in length, the name does not lie. The Megalodon looks something like a beefed up great white shark, which is part of why some scientists believe them to be closely related. Reaching roughly 60 feet or 18 meters in length, this beast would be among the largest in the ocean, even longer than a city bus. Due to its powerful jaws, it's able to bite with over 180 newtons of force, which is why it's believed that the Megalodon attacked its prey from the side biting through its body into the vital organs, rather than attacking from beneath like a great white shark. This creature was built to hunt and was an extremely successful predator, preying mostly on large creatures like whales, seals, and giant turtles. But if these creatures were so incredibly fit for their surroundings, how did they end up going extinct? Let's look into it, since this could help us understand them and understand the necessary changes to the world in order for them to survive. Climate change certainly played a factor in its extinction. Not the man-made climate change we've seen in recent years, but the natural, much more gradual change that has been seen throughout the history of of the Earth. Global cooling made it more difficult for them to survive in many climates. However, as the temperature changed, many migrated to more suitable areas. Thus, climate change had little direct effect on the extinction. However, this climate change had another effect that did lead to the extinction of the Megalodon. By the end of the Miocene, many of the species the Megalodon preyed on had gone extinct, and those that survived were more difficult to catch. The lack of food and competition with other super predators led to the extinction of the Megalodon. So if we're imagining a world where Megalodons didn't go extinct, we would need the food
food sources, particularly the mysticetes or baleen whales, to not go extinct either. This means that not only would our world have enormous sharks swimming around, but whales would be more diverse and abundant as well. This in turn would mean that smaller fish and krill would have to be more abundant to feed the whales, which in turn would feed the megalodon. But that's not all. The increase in mysticetes would mean that the other species of super predators could also survive. This means that we wouldn't only have to worry about the megalodon, but other large creatures as well. All this is to say that the addition of the megalodon would make waves in the ocean's ecosystems. Pun very much intended. But there's another rather pressing question to answer. How would this affect us? Well, if we're looking at how early humans would interact with megalodons, we could look at the video game Ark. If you play Ark, you'll know that these pesky prehistoric sharks love to strand low-level players on islands. There's nothing more frustrating than swimming to an island only to find yourself surrounded by megalodons. And this is something that could well have been an issue in the early days of humanity. Since megalodons tended to reside off the coast, even a trip on a raft or small boat could lead to an attack. However, there were already large, dangerous creatures in the ocean at that time, and the addition of another likely wouldn't have huge effects on humanity's travel across the ocean. Nowadays, the existence of megalodons wouldn't have a huge effect on humanity as a whole. It would certainly be interesting, albeit terrifying, to see a living one, but we have progressed to the point where we don't really depend on seafaring on small vessels. Perhaps there would be the odd story of a megalodon attack off the coast, which would of course make the headlines, but the actual odds of this happening would be rather slim. And now we return to our question, what if megalodons didn't go extinct? Well, if the megalodon was to survive, sea life would likely need to be more diverse and abundant in order to feed all members of the ecosystem. In terms of its impacts on humanity, it might have been quite terrifying in man's early days, but modern humans likely wouldn't have much trouble with it. That said, I don't know about you, but I might think twice about going into the water knowing there could be a bus with teeth waiting for me. 60 million years ago, following the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, giant snakes roamed the Americas. The biggest of these snakes was known as Titanoboa, and it was just as terrifying as it sounds. Related to modern day boa constrictors, Titanoboa was a monster. Thankfully, Titanoboa went extinct. But what if it didn't? That's exactly what we're going to talk about right now on Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that asks the questions everyone else is too afraid to ask. I'm your host, Charlotte Dobre, and if you enjoy our content, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Is there anything scarier than a gigantic snake? Maybe me when I wake up in the morning. A team of scientists found a Titanoboa fossil at an open pit coal mine in Colombia. The Titanoboa makes modern day anacondas look like toys. According to fossils, Titanoboa was 12.8 meters or 42 feet long and weighed about 1,100 kilograms or 2,500 pounds. But because snake fossils are extremely hard to find, it's not completely out of the question that it could have grown to be even larger. It's believed that Titanoboa ate large turtles and Crocodilomorpha, which were essentially giant crocodiles. The Titanoboa lived in what is believed to have been the first recorded neotropical forest that ever existed, where Central and South America exist today. How did Titanoboa get so big? Well, back during during the Paleocene era, the Earth was quite a bit warmer. The average temperature of its habitat was on average about 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The warm climate allowed for cold blooded snakes to grow very large, much larger than any snake we currently know of. Even to this day, as you move away from the equator, ectothermic animals decrease in size. Titanoboa became the rainforest's top predator, and for good reason. It is the biggest snake to ever have lived. Titanoboa killed its victims using asphyxiation, where it wrapped itself tightly around its prey and squeeze until its prey suffocated. Once you're in Titanoboa's mouth, there is no escape. Row upon row of sharp, curved teeth that point to the rear of its mouth keep the prey moving toward the stomach. Titanoboa slithered around in water and swamps. Thankfully, it began to go extinct toward the beginning of the Miocene era. But now that you know a little about Titanoboa, let's talk about what would happen if it never went extinct in the first place. First things first, because Titanoboa would need to live in warmer climates, it would only be able to survive in rainforests near the equator. This would be good news for everyone who lived farther north or south of the equator. It would, however, mean bad news for any Central and South Americans that lived anywhere near the habitat of the Titanoboa. Indigenous people in the area like the Aztecs and the Incas probably would have regarded Titanoboa as a god and would have made sacrifices to it. That is, if Titanoboa didn't prey on them. Perhaps Incas or Aztecs wouldn't have even existed. As Titanoboa hunted mostly in water, a way for forest dwelling people to escape it would be to build their homes in trees. The entire history of Central American indigenous peoples might be different. In modern times, there would of course be hunters who would try to track down Titanoboa for various reasons, perhaps even for food. Titanoboa meat would be considered a delicacy, one food connoisseurs would be eager to put on their plates. But catching a Titanoboa would not be easy. Navigating the difficult, swampy terrain of the rainforest would be needless to say, hard. But one thing you could do to lure it close would be to set a trap. 
crocodiles, the Titanoboa's main food source, also lived until modern day. Set a trap with a crocodile and wait for a boa to come to you. Once it devoured its meal, like most snakes, it would be tired and less likely to attack. This would be the perfect time to strike. At the same time, countless books and television shows would be made about the Titanoboa. Nature shows like BBC's Planet Earth would do everything in their power, even risk lives to get footage of it. It's not likely that it would be kept in zoos, after all it's huge and it would have to be fed crocodiles. No one knows exactly why Titanoboa went extinct. The main theory is that the temperature of the earth began to cool. The hotter the temperature, the bigger the snake. But the same is true for the opposite. This is because in places where the temperature is constantly hot, the metabolism of reptiles operates sufficiently. The bigger a snake gets, the more energy it needs to sustain it. But once the global temperature began to drop, the Titanoboa's metabolism could not adjust. And eventually, it went extinct. And I'm not mad about it. I don't know about you, but even small snakes scare the crap out of me. 360 to 380 million years ago, during the late Devonian period, there lived a huge species of predatory fish that grew up to 20 feet long and weighed up to a ton. That fish was Dunkleosteus, and it lived far before the dinosaurs did. The Devonian was a period on planet Earth where fish reigned king, and the king of all kings was Dunkleosteus. But for the next few minutes, let's imagine a hypothetical timeline where old Dunkaroo didn't go extinct when it did. What would the cause and effect have been? That's what we are going to talk about on today's episode of Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that imagines the impossible. I'm Charlotte Dobre. This is where I remind you to smash the thumbs up, subscribe button, notification bell, and make sure you ask us a question in the comments below. Even though it was basically a giant fish, Dunkleosteus was one of the most terrifying predators ever to exist. It kind of looked like a submarine, but in the shape of a fish. It was armored and had extremely thick, muscly skin that was difficult for its enemies to puncture. It also had a distinctly shaped mouth, a beak, somewhat like that of a parrot. It didn't have teeth, but it had an extremely powerful bite and two bony plates, and with them could bite down at a force of 6,000 pounds, right up there with the Megalodon's bite force. Its jaws were so powerful that they killed instantly and could easily slice through a large victim and break them clean in half. Experts think that its mouth was so big it may have just swallowed its prey whole. That being said, Dunkleosteus was believed to have been a relatively slow swimmer. Dunkleosteus fossils have been discovered all over the world, in North America, in Africa, and in Europe. Interestingly, it lived at the same time as the koalacanth, a species of fish that didn't go extinct and still exists today. Granted, they are rare, but they can be found off the east coast of Africa near the Comoro Islands, as well as off the coast of Indonesia and in the Indian Ocean. So why did Dunkleosteus go extinct and not koalacanth? Well, right around the time of its extinction, oxygen levels in the ocean dropped significantly. A drop in oxygen means that the big fish that needed that oxygen wouldn't be able to survive, and neither would much of the marine life. This mass extinction killed off between 79% and 87% of all marine species, including Dunkleosteus. For many, many millions of years after that, smaller fish flourished until marine dinosaurs came about. At the same time, at the end of the late Devonian period, that was when the race to the land began. Vertebrates began to leave the water, like the ancestor of all four limbed vertebrates, tetrapods. Their fins eventually turned into legs. In the hypothetical world where Dunkleosteus didn't go extinct, the thing that was responsible for killing it off would not have happened. Oxygen levels in the world's oceans would have had to remain at high levels for Dunkleosteus not to go extinct, and that would have set off a domino effect. One of the main reasons why a drop in oxygen occurred is because land plants began to flourish. These land plants created nutrients that got swept up into the oceans and was then consumed by algae, which multiplied. But then when the algae died, bacteria took over, and that's what consumed all the remaining oxygen and caused the end of the Devonian period. Without this drop in oxygen, Dunkleosteus and other species of giant fish would have continued to thrive, and the rest of marine life would too. The Devonian period saw an impressive array of different species of fish unlike anything that exists today. Our oceans would have been extremely lush, with vegetation to create the oxygen. Perhaps if there were no drop in oxygen, the Devonian period would have continued on for even longer, or perhaps not have ended at all. There might not have been a race to the land, and eventually that might have meant that humans wouldn't exist. Sure, there may have been a race to the land at some point, but that wouldn't have occurred until much later. If the race to land didn't happen when it did, who knows how evolution would have been affected by this. But one thing is for certain, the world's inhabitants would look a lot different than they do, perhaps even aquatic looking in nature, or amphibious. The Earth's ocean would become even more and more diverse with every passing millennia. Perhaps even humanoid sea-dwelling beings would have evolved from some types of fish. You know, like that dude from Shape of Water? Yeah, kind of like that. 
but these humanoids would still have to worry about Dunkleosteus and other large predatory fish that would not have gone extinct. But as I previously stated, Dunkleosteus was not a very fast swimmer, so maybe these humanoids would just have to pick up the pace a little bit. Of course, we don't have an exact reason why all of these changes in evolution occurred. It was likely a number of contributing factors. But as soon as you change one thing about the course of history, especially something as vital as oxygen levels in the ocean, a strange timeline begins to take shape, one where humans might not exist entirely. Over 100 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period, there lived a monster known as Chronosaurus, a 30 foot long marine reptile that you definitely wouldn't want to cross paths with in the ocean. It was not a dinosaur, but a relative of the Pliosaur, a group of large marine reptiles. Chronosaurus is believed to have gone extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs, but what if it didn't? What if it lived on until modern day? That's exactly what we're going to talk about right now on Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Charlotte Dobre. This is where I ask you to leave a like, subscribe and let us know in the comments below a question you have always wanted to know the answer to. We'll do our best to answer it in a future episode of Life's Biggest Questions. Back in 1899, a man named Andrew Crombie found a scrap of bone containing six conical teeth. He gave the fossil to the Queensland Museum. A quarter of a century later, the director of the Queensland Museum at the time, Herber Longman, declared that the fossil belonged to a previously unheard of species, which he called Chronosaurus Queenslandicus. More fossils that belonged to Chronosaurus were then discovered. Chronosaurus was named after the father of Zeus, the Greek god Cronus, and for good reason. It is one of the biggest and most deadly marine reptiles to ever have existed. Chronosaurus was gargantuan, at least 30 feet from end to end. It had a long head, short neck, four flippers, and a short tail. Chronosaurus was a carnivore, and its mouth was decked out with many long teeth. Fossils put these teeth at at least 3 inches in length, some were up to 12 inches. Interestingly, apparently Chronosaurus' teeth were not that sharp, at least not in comparison with other marine reptiles and prehistoric sharks. That doesn't mean however that it wouldn't suck to end up in its mouth. Chronosaurus made up for its blunt teeth with an extremely powerful bite and swimming capabilities. Chronosaurus' flippers allowed it to swim extremely fast, making it difficult for prey to escape it. Once Chronosaurus had its prey in its jaw, it violently shook it and then its powerful bite could snap the shell of a giant turtle as easily as an eggshell. Rather than eat giant squids and fish, Chronosaurus liked to munch on its fellow marine reptiles, as well as plesiosaurs, a long necked, warm blooded creature that ate mostly fish and cephalopods. Chronosaurus's habitat was not only near Australia. Close to complete fossil specimens were found in Colombia, a country that has a rich history of huge, prehistoric snakes, turtles, and crocodiles. One can then infer that its habitat likely extended worldwide. The Chronosaurus may have also inhabited the western United States because most of that area was covered by a shallow body of water during the early Cretaceous period. It isn't exactly certain why Chronosaurus went extinct. It was partially because its species was under threat from sharks as well as a new species of marine reptiles, Mosasaurs. And then when a 15 km wide asteroid struck the earth 66 million years ago, they went completely extinct. But what if they didn't? What would it mean for other marine life and human life on earth? Let's say that somehow, Chronosaurus survived the devastating impact of the meteor when most other large marine creatures didn't. It would have been extremely difficult for Chronosaurus to survive the Ice Age. Back when it roamed the seas, the Earth was at least 8 degrees hotter than it is now. For this reason, Chronosaurus would have only been able to stand waters near the equator. Perhaps it would have adapted to these cooler temperatures by developing thick, blubbery skin. If Chronosaurus lived until modern day, its brain may have evolved to be relatively intelligent. Perhaps not as intelligent as humans, but definitely smart. And because it became so smart, it would have been an expert at finding and killing prey. Since Chronosaurus loved to prey on other marine life, it's likely that sharks, whales, and porpoises would have been its favorite snacks. Perhaps larger marine life would cease to exist as we know it. The mass extinction that occurred 66 million years ago made way for mammals. Without it, many of the creatures that exist today simply wouldn't. And that definitely goes for large marine life. It can be assumed that perhaps the only type of marine life to flourish would be fish, cephalopods, and smaller mammals, and sharks that could easily hide from Chronosaurus. Maybe creatures like dolphins would have evolved to be much smaller than we know them to be, and would have had to create protective places and dens to keep away from Chronosaurus. That being said, another type of animal would have preyed on it, humans. Humans would have added them to their menu, and since Chronosaurus may have existed in all parts of the globe, one can assume that many different cultures would have hunted them. This definitely wouldn't have been easy, but specifically crafted weapons would have been invented. That being said, Chronosaurus would have made sea travel extremely difficult. A 30 foot long carnivorous marine reptilian would make any sane person avoid a boat trip. If Chronosaurus didn't go extinct, it may have affected trade routes as well as explorers to the new world. Rough seas were already difficult enough for explorers. 
explorers. Imagine having to deal with Chronosaurus as well. Maybe many areas of the globe would remain undiscovered for this reason. What do you think would happen if Chronosaurus didn't go extinct? What if the Sarcosuchus didn't go extinct? Sarcosuchus looked a good deal like a modern crocodile, with a long, heavy body with a skull roughly the same length as a human adult, 75% of which was the snout. Its eyes rolled up and down rather than left and right, implying that it spent most of its time partially submerged and likely hunted in a similar fashion to modern crocodiles. However, there were a number of characteristics that differentiated them from modern crocs. For one, Sarcosuchus had a snout ending in a bulla, which mystifies paleontologists to this day. It's believed that this could have been used to increase their sense of smell, used as a weapon, used to attract mates, or even used to communicate. Of course, if they were real, we would be able to better determine why they had this, but currently scientists are unsure as to its use. Sarcosuchus was also covered in osteoderms, armored plates from head to tail. These osteoderms are found on modern crocodiles as well, but with a slight difference. Modern crocodiles have a small gap in the plates between their necks and the rest of their body, giving them a bit of flexibility. Sarcosuchus, on the other hand, had no such break, with the only uncovered parts being the tip of its tail and front of its head. This lowered its flexibility, but granted it increased defense. Perhaps the most interesting part of the Sarcosuchus was its incredible ability to continue growing throughout its lifespan. While modern crocs reach full adult size after around 10 years, Sarcosuchus is believed to have continued growing throughout life. This was found by examining cross-sections of bones from various specimens. This allowed it to reach incredible lengths, the largest croc we are aware of reaching as much as 40 feet in length. They also weighed roughly 10 times more than modern crocodiles, with some weighing over 10 tons. I think I speak for everyone when I say, crikey! So clearly this creature would be terrifying to run into, but how might the world be different if they existed? Well, as with many such creatures, the mere existence of one more predator wouldn't change the human world too much. We live largely outside of the food chain and would likely avoid them as much as possible, but certain areas might see significant changes. In these places, there would of course be changes to the ecosystems with such a large predator continuing to live, hunt, and breed. Their enormous size allowed them to prey on both fish and dinosaurs, and as time passed, their diet would adapt and they would begin eating other creatures. However, with over a hundred million years worth of evolution to account for, their effects on ecosystems would be little more than a guessing game. So let's look at some of the more predictable effects of the survival of Sarcosuchus. We know that the Sarcosuchus lived in what is now the Sahara Desert. Considering the Sahara is significantly drier than it was at the time of the Sarcosuchus, when it was largely wet and swampy, it might have evolved to be better suited for dry environments. Its body would change to be less suited for floating in water and more suited for staying on land. Its eyes might change so that they roll left and right for better land hunting. Its legs and body would likely change as well, becoming more agile and lighter to make it more proficient at moving and surviving on land. One aspect that would make the existence of the Sarcosuchus especially significant to us is its ability to continue growing throughout life. If we manage to capture one, it's possible that we could extend its lifespan and have it grow even larger than the largest we've seen. In the wild, there are a number of factors that lead to premature death of an organism, but without food scarcity or harsh weather or drought, and with the advantage of medical care, there's a good chance that we could have a sarco in captivity that grew even longer than 40 feet, even reaching 50 or 60 feet. This might see various zoos and attractions competing to have the largest one in hopes of drawing the largest crowds. This croc measuring contest, to repeat, that phrase was croc measuring, would attract a wide variety of spectators and could be highly lucrative to the winner. It should be noted that this ability is not unique to Sarcosuchus. A number of animals have exhibited this indeterminate growth, even some who live today. Many fish, amphibians, lizards, and snakes are among this group, as well as certain mammals like kangaroos, whose skeletons never stop growing. However, if ever there was an animal that would be awesome to see grow to a giant size and would inspire zoo owners to compare crocs, I think Sarcosuchus is that animal. To quote Family Guy, That little rat looking thing just got ate! Damn, nature! You scary! And now we return to our question, what if the Sarcosuchus didn't go extinct? Well, of course, with over 100 million years to account for, we can't know every effect they might have on the world. However, if they remained in the Sahara, they would likely need to adapt to the much drier climate, depending less on water to live. Also, because of their ability to grow throughout life, not to mention their fierce and frankly awesome looks, it's possible that they would become highly popular exhibits, with many attempting to grow the largest sarco in the world, hopefully in a large habitat, because cages are lame. What if the mega piranha never went extinct? What a question, what a day. So before we bite our way firmly into this video, let me ask you a question. What do you think the scariest prehistoric creature was? I think 
I'm gonna have to go with a member of the dinosaur family, like the T-Rex or the Maposaurus or the Plesiosaur. I mean, they were big, right? But piranhas do still exist, and they terrify me even today, and I've never even been to the Amazon. Did anyone used to play Tomb Raider? In Tomb Raider 3, if Lara fell into that piranha water, it was bad news bears. Anyway, I digress. If you like our channel, please do make sure you're leaving me a thumbs up and sharing this video with a friend that needs to hear about scary, scary fish today. Stick around to the end because I'm going to be responding to some comments. Also, if you want to check out some sources on piranhas, then please look at our description box where you'll also find links to our Instagrams and everyone who went into making this video. Okay, Nasha's at the ready. Um, um, let's get chatting Mega Piranha. I'm ready. Are you ready? The Mega Piranha was alive and biting between 6 and 10 million years ago. Considering the size of the beasts alive back then, it really wasn't actually that massive. In fact, the Mega Piranha may have been Mega by name, but it was only about 1 meter long, although some scientists estimate they could reach up to 1.5 meters, which is nearly 5 foot, which is nearly my height. Ah, the fish was actually pretty light at just 25 pounds in weight, or just over 11 kilos. For the keen anglers out there, you'll know that while that is sizeable, it isn't as big as they come by any stretch of the imagination. However, there is a big reason that I would absolutely not suggest fishing for these ancient water devils. If you've heard of modern day piranhas, you'll know why. The most loathsome piranha we have in the water today is the black piranha. That fish is just two and a half pounds in weight, or just 1.13 kilos, but even that can bite with a force of 30 times its own body weight, or three times the force of an American alligator. The mega piranha was much bigger, much, much bigger. Already 10 times the size of what we have today, it is thought that its bite to body ratio was even stronger, with some scientists suggesting that it had a bite force of over 1,000 pounds or 445 kilos. Stephanie Crofts, a University of Washington doctoral student in biology, said If our calculations are correct, the mega piranha was probably a bone crushing predator, taking bites of anything and everything. Thing. Hip hip hooray. So you want to stay out of the water, I think it's safe to say. If they never went extinct, I'm assuming that they would still be living in the area that they were native to, South America, specifically the Amazon basin. These days all piranhas still live in South America too, with 20 different species in the Amazon river. As is with the fish still alive today, piranhas have killed a lot of people. In 2016, 50 people were injured in northeast Brazil by piranhas that were forced to swim in deeper waters through drought. Separately, 20 holidaymakers in the same year were injured by just one piranha who was loose goose in the shallow waters of Rio Grande. Had it been the whole shoal, well, it's largely hyperbole to say that a human could be skeletized in seconds by a bunch of piranhas, but I have to say, once again, there have been a lot of deaths that have occurred from people falling into piranha infested water. Imagine the situation if the 10 times bigger prehistoric murderers were out and about. Then there really would be significantly more fatalities in the Amazon region. Piranhas today travel in a shoal, a big group, so they can protect themselves and also corner prey, savaging them in a frenzy. Can you imagine what would happen if there was a shoal of bitey bitey mega piranhas who can devour you in seconds? Honestly, it is the stuff of nightmares. That all being said, humans aren't what piranhas eat, although of course they'll take what they can get, but these days, the smaller fish eat weeds and crustaceans and worms and the like, but if they were 10 times bigger, perhaps they'd be getting into Amazon pink river dolphins, anacondas and capybaras and the like. And I think actually that would be a crying shame. Once again, yes, humans, they would eat them if they had the misfortune of falling in the water, and I have to think, actually, perhaps the crime world would now include dumping bodies in the Amazon river and waiting for the mega peas to off the evidence. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, culturally. Would we not be hella scared of the mega piranha in the way that I would say we are like great white sharks today? They would kill more people, so I think we'd be more afraid. Let's have a look at Austin Powers, for example. Dr. Evil would so not be messing around with freaking sharks with freaking lasers when he could have a tank full of mega piranhas. Savages. I'll end this video by voicing my biggest concern in general when it comes to these extinct beasties. What if, and I use this in capital letters, what if, 
the mega piranha not going extinct would be indicative of other prehistoric creatures too. If the killer giant fish could survive, then I don't dare to think what else could have crept by nature's coal. And beyond that, if they never died out, what on earth would they have spawned? Yep, I think that I'll be filling my nightmares this evening. I mean, it doesn't honestly really bear thinking about, and honestly, I think I've had enough for one day, but perhaps we can make a video just talking about all prehistoric killers. Wouldn't that be fun? Bitey, bitey, bad, bad, the mega piranha was the scariest fish we ever had. But it's dead, so rest your head. Babe, don't worry, fish ain't coming back in a hurry.